Welcome back to another episode of the Transformers, the creation of a billion dollar brand. In the last episode, we were discussing how the team at Marvel Comics fleshed out the story arc of the Transformers toy line, which was given to them by um, Hasbro. And how Bob Budiaski was central and instrumental in the streamlining and certainly the uh, articulation and creation of the narrative and the plot and the storyline of the Fran Transformers franchise. And... As I said before in the last episode, uh, the decision of um, the Marvel Comics people to go along with a Cold War theme that would connect the toy line to the trend stacking of that period of time, uh, wherein this toy line by Hasbro was supposed to not only sell, but in order to sell, had to make some kind of emotional and psychological connection to the uh, prime consumer of this toy. And that would be the American child. But as we will explore later, uh, the theme of the Cold War would also help it help this toy line to also relate, as it were, to teenagers, young adult, who uh, became connected to the animated series, which is what we're going to begin to discuss in this episode. Uh, and that was instrumentally key to the success of the brand that Hasbro was creating for this Japanese toy line. And one thing was sure about uh, what the people at Marvel Comics did was it gave maximum, maximum marketability to this, what was uh, a toy line that didn't necessarily have that, but as I said before, it needed to be tweaked uh, and teased, certainly out of the uh, original Diaclone, that's what it was called, Diaclone toy line. And so, to discuss the animated series, which the other arm of Marvel... Uh, LTD was going to deal with, and that was, of course, uh, Marvel Productions and the formation of a television series uh, from this uh, toy line. And Hasbro had had great success uh, with Marvel Productions, as I said before in an earlier episode, with the G.I. Joe um, toy line and animated series. The animated series, of course, uh, giving new life to this old toy line of uh, Hasbro. And it was based on that success that Hasbro uh, said to Marvel Productions, uh, make a animated series out of this new robot toy line that we brought back from Tokyo. And because of the detail that Bob Budiaski and also the uh, team of comic book writers did, they were able to make a hell of a uh, cartoon series out of that. And we're going to discuss that. Um, the people at Marvel Comics, because first of all, Marvel, it would be the, the animated series would be a production of both Marvel comics, I mean Marvel, uh, the Marvel production, but let me just cross that out, Marvel production, and also Sunbow, 
production. Both Marvel and Sunbow were responsible for the success of um, the G.I. Joe series. Sunbow provided all the people who would do the voice acting and the general script writing. But Marvel Productions also provided the framework, the animators, and everything else like that. Um, so this collaboration between these two companies, and of course, uh, Claster would be Hasbro's distribution arm. As far as finding the syndicated channels to move this uh, TV animated series. Now, I just want to talk about some of the key people who were responsible for the animated series. And one of the first people was um, a very well-known person, entity, and still is, quite frankly, she is uh, one of the pioneers of the uh, successful cartoons of the 80s, and that was Margaret Lush. Margaret Lush. Margaret Lush, very interestingly enough, uh, Got her degree at Louisiana, the University of Southern, of Southern Mississippi. I was going to say Louisiana University, excuse me, the University of Southern Mississippi. And she got a um, political science degree there. But very interestingly enough, found her way into television. At first she worked for ABC, then she worked for NBC. And then, in 1979, she got a plum job in children's programming as a vice president of Hanna-Barbera. which was before Marvel Productions came along, which was the premier um, television production company for children's animated series. And as the uh, vice president at Hanna-Barbera of children's programming, she was able to uh, bring a lot of things uh, to the small screen that we remember well. She was one of the people who brought, for instance, the Smurfs. Um, she also did a lot of other things with the well-known Entities such as Yogi Bear and um, all those holiday specials that we remember. Um, she had a hand in all of those programs. And by cutting her teeth at Hanna-Barbera, she was able to bring that expertise over to Marvel Comic, I mean Marvel Productions. As she came on board, <clears throat> uh, just as, um, oh, in terms of Marvel comic, I mean Marvel productions, she came on board just as uh, Hasbro was and Marvel Productions was um, beginning to 
do the miniseries for the relaunch of G.I. Joe. And that was in 1983, where uh, Loesch made the switch to Marvel Productions. But nonetheless, you can see the brevity of time here. Um, she was only at um, Hanna-Barbera for just about four years, give or take. But she saw that Marvel Productions or certainly was uh, a better opportunity for her and certainly gave her a point of association certainly allowed her to uh, become attached to this new toy line that was going to sweep the pop culture in a way that um, other previous uh, brands did not necessarily uh, take hold. Or certainly in a way that other, other brands did not uh, have the capacity to do. But nevertheless, she got on board just as the G.I. Joe franchise and now the Transformers. The other two people that we are going to uh, discuss are uh, Lee Gunther. Lee Gunther, who had a career in uh, television in the 60s. But he, um, let me write the name. But he went to a animated studio to pat a freeling entertainment. And um, this was in the early 70s and stayed there for a while. But the Pate Freeling Entertainment was brought by Marvel Comics and Marvel, and by extension, Marvel Productions. And so he found his way into uh, Marvel Productions by acquisition. And there he served as executive president and executive producer for two of the animated series, but for a whole slew of animated series. Because one of the things about uh, Marvel Comics, they were really uh, Marvel Productions. I keep saying comics. Uh, but Marvel Productions, it's all the same thing, really. But Marvel Productions, uh, the same company, I mean. Uh, Marvel Productions would have a host of things. But for Lee Gunther... Um, he became the executive producer for a whole line, not only Transformers, as I already said, it was G.I. Joe that he became executive producer for Transformers. Another series was um, Inhumanoids. I remember this well. Um, so he became associated with some of the name brands of Marvel Productions. And... Last but not least, and I'll take this on another episode because I'm coming up on 15 minutes here, was Joe Bacall. Joe Bacall was really a driving force as uh, with his partner Tom Griffin uh, as the uh, owners or certainly the CEOs of... Um, 
Sunbow Productions. And I will come back in the ep next episode. Pick up there.